All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today, yeah. here uh, of you uh, about politics. Uh, everyone in, uh, but the majority of people they see it in a very I mean, they take it as it is. Um, as historian just yesterday, an article, and the a young Saudi. Numbered, you know, most of you will okay. We'll take this guy as a, as a someone he is not a Saudi, and I mean, why he is going to say such a thing unless there is a really a very clear evidence that such a thing is going to happen. But most of the people do not understand that the media in the West are not really Western media, not anymore. Qatar, as a country which is a major enemy. To the crown prince of Saudi Arabia and to the Saudi in general is buying most of the newspapers writers author and money talk and I will not be surprised if this person he got a check big one from the Qatari government who is willing to buy anyone anytime they are willing to sell themselves to the devil and you know when you read the article I actually I encourage all of you to read it you will see how you know how funny and how silly uh, this person who is supposedly considered as historian he speak about what he called the days which is numbered uh, look like in order to read the, the whole thing I have to type a name and uh, uh, an email so we can open it for you. All right, let us do that. Now you have to have a free, even reading the article, this is the Times, even reading the article is going to be, you have to pay for it. You know, you believe it. Uh, anyway, I, but I saw the article in different place. Uh, and I found it very funny and very silly. It is obviously the Times newspaper get a good money, good, good, uh, good check from the Qatari uh, government to make such a, a claim. Now, why supposedly the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia is uh, going to lose his position? According to this author, or this historian, as they call him, the the he's counting reasons, you know, and reasons always. Uh, I encourage people to, to to come with their reasoning because reasoning can expose the person mentality, how smart and how stupid he is. And if you read the reasons he is counting, you will see how silly this person is. As an example, he said. One of the reasons the crown prince he arrested uh, in 2017 he arrested uh, many businessmen and he is saying that make the money flow out of Saudi Arabia you know this is can be true if those businessmen are not Saudi and not all their money in Saudi Arabia, which they cannot sell easy. You see, if you're a businessman who live in Los Angeles, and yet your citizenship is Saudi, I mean, who care if the Saudi is going after you? Uh, let us say after the money you have in Saudi Arabia, your money is already out. However, uh, those are Saudi, and by arresting Saudi princes, between those who they are arrested 
the royal family in Saudi Arabia, which is not a royal family, by the way, they are just a bunch of Bedouin who got the support of the U of of uh, of USA and the British intelligence as usually, and they made them kings. All the kings you see in the Arabian Peninsula, they are a bunch of idiots. They are Bedouin who used to take a shower once every ten years, and then the British intelligent they choose certain families to make them kings. So all the kings you see there. Qatar, Emirat, Bahrain, all of this is the made of either the British intelligent or the British and the USA intelligent at the same time, including the King of Jordan, you know, and his family. This guy is a potato. They went to Mecca and they say, okay, this guy, he claimed that he is from the family of Muhammad. Let us fool the Arab. And then we make the Arab make a revolution against the Turkish and the Turkish empire will shrink. And then we will hire the family of this guy to divide the, the Middle East to kingdoms. And then we have a guy, his name is Sharif Hussein, the Honorable Hussein, which is not honorable. Actually, it's a shame to be even a grandson of Muhammad, if he is. But all of us, we know the Quran says that Muhammad is a father of none of your men. So how this guy became a grandson? Well, anyway, and Muhammad have no kids. Even the, the daughters, they say, those are his daughters. Those are not his daughters. However... Emirat, Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and for sure we can count more, but this is the, more, the major ones because of the oil business. They are made by the West. And because they are made by the West, and they are brand by the West, they got the protection of the West for a long, long time. And they cannot live without the protection of the West. It, the, it doesn't matter we are talking about who. Like, remember, we said the Qatari are the enemies of the Saudi, but both are protected by the same protector. The Saudi protected by USA, the Qatari protected by USA. It's the same. It's like you have two chickens in two cages and you put them next to each other and they scream at each other, but at the end of the day, you own them both. Now, the, the article which is speaking about uh, the crown prince, they said when he did uh, arrest those princes, they made many flee out of the country with their money. And you will notice always the one who lead the scandals against Saudi Arabia is Al Jazeera TV, which is the media dog of Qatar, Al Jazeera TV, as you see. Al Jazeera TV look like Al Jazeera TV have nothing to speak about except Saudi Arabia day and night why because simply they are enemies and why because not it's just it's not just about two people who they are a king and this guy is a prince and this guy he don't like this guy it is beyond that a few years ago the Saudi and the Emirati they found that the Muslims Brotherhood they are planning to take over their countries. You know, uh, Hassan al-Banna, who is the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood, in his lifetime, you know, the, the king of Saudi Arabia at that time, uh, when, when they do Hajj, when people do Hajj, they bring the most, uh, let us say, uh, let us now, let us say we have a YouTubers who they are uh, out-speaking people. They have a... Let us say uh, 500,000 subscriber, you know. So what they do, they bring those who they have many supposedly uh, listeners or people. They have, let us say, an impact in the community. Hassan al-Banna, he was a very well-known, um, skilled person in making speeches. And he offered the king of Saudi Arabia to open a branch for the Muslims Brotherhood in Saudi Arabia. The king of Saudi Arabia at that time, he was a lot, you know, he's a Bedouin. Those Bedouin are really, they are something, you know. You might think they are Bedouin, they are stupid, etc. But when it's come to playing games, they are the best in playing games. And you cannot trust the Bedouin. Even the Quran says that the most of the Kuffar, the ugly ones of the Kuffar, is the Bedouin. So the Bedouin king, he said to the Egyptian uh, Muslim, uh, why you want to open a branch for the Muslim Brotherhood when we are all already brothers? And by that, he silenced them from asking for any more branches 
but that did not stop the Muslim Brotherhood from expanding like octopus all over the Middle East and they start to grow into the point seven ministers out I think 19 in uh, in Emirate or United Arab Emirate they became seven ministers out of the major number of, of the ministers in the government of Emirate they were Muslims Brotherhood imagine so they were growing in Emirate big time and not only that always the Ministry of Education is under the control of the Muslims Brotherhood which is extremely dangerous which means they control all the education system in Emirate for many many years and the Emirati because it's a small tiny country and they don't want to go in opposition with the Muslim Brotherhood who became a very huge organization spread it all over the world and not to mention how powerful they are in Europe and by the support and getting the Prince of Qatar joining the Muslim Brotherhood organization the Muslim Brotherhood they get additional power which is a lot of money small tiny country have a lot of money and they do not know really what to do with it small tiny population so they start the the you know the Muslim Brotherhood using the power of the Qatari to sneak themselves into power more and more many years ago and maybe many of you do not know and I when I say no I said from the beginning that the the media in the West is not a Western media even though many of you think uh, that the Western the, the Western media is Western media I don't know how many of you knows that the BBC funded for many years by the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and then for sure many of you have no idea about this one day the BBC they made um, a program and they invited uh, an opposition against the Saudi and then the Saudi over one day they called the BBC they said you know what we are the one is funding you and you bring somebody to speak against us forget it from now on you are by yourself the BBC went bankrupt and talking about the BBC Arabic the BBC Arabic decided to close their windows and their doors which means they cannot do broadcast no more and then the Qatari they found a golden opportunity to start a TV station it's called Al Jazeera Al Jazeera TV Al Jazeera TV is nothing but a copycat of the BBC Arabic all the employees who are fired from the BBC immediately in the same day they receive an invitation to work in a new TV station which is not even created yet it's called a known name which is later became a Jazeera because they, they made a fast decision okay BBC are closing this is a great great opportunity the space now will be empty for any media take over Al Jazeera was one of the first for sure the BBC is a lot before but now because the BBC is going out and all those who work in the BBC Arabic they are out of job so what about we hire them all and we have a lot of money and we open a new BBC and we call it Al Jazeera TV and this is exactly what happened Al Jazeera TV is the media not of Qatar this is the media the real media of the Muslims Brotherhood you know many they think this is just a TV station from Qatar owned by the Prince of Qatar this is a this is not a true this is the real arm of media and politics of the Muslims Brotherhood anyone goes against the Muslim Brotherhood 
he will be in the front page of Al Jazeera TV every day trying to put him down, make him look like a joke, making fabricating lies about you, or even saying the truth about you. It doesn't matter. The point is, if you are not with them, they will do their best to publish your laundry. And if you don't have laundry, they will create one. This is why you see, after a few years, the Saudi, they decided to open a new TV station. It's called Al Arabiya TV. I don't know if you can see the names. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys you can see. So now when we try to search for something in the Middle East, trying to find the news, we find two major stations. What One is called Al Arabiya and one is called Al Jazeera. And Al Arabiya was created as a response to Al Jazeera. So the Saudi, they said, oh, oh. The Qatari, the small tiny country, they are smarter than us and they open a TV station. They spend a lot of money to make it very popular. And we left alone. So now they can do every harm for us and we have no voice and no mouth except paying this guy and this guy in the West to say from, the, from time to time, say something good about us. So they decide, and I'm talking especially now about the Arabic first. So the Saudi government, they decide to create a TV station which is called Al Arabiya, which means the Arabic or the Arab, the Arabian, as a way to fight back Al Jazeera. So now we have the war is starting already in different standards. You see, this is the this is how things is getting like. Uh, I'm I'm just going back in the in, in the in the history a little bit. So you guys, you see how things getting to the top, higher and higher, higher to the point. If not America, Saudi Arabia would invade Qatar two years ago. And the only one who stopped that, it was the, the, the American, especially after Trump, he took over. So now if you read, if you read all the news coming from Al Jazeera TV, which is again, the Muslim Brotherhood TV station, all of it you will not find one positive article about the saudi not even one and that is impossible i mean there's no way there's a country does not have one good, good thing happening i mean it's but but because this is a media launched in order to do something they have a political agenda Al Jazeera TV is the only TV station in the world who is very close to Al Qaeda, but yet they claim that the Qatar they claim that they are a friend of USA, and not only that, actually, USA have the biggest base, army base in the world in Qatar, paid by the Prince of Qatar, which means everything is for free. But yet the Prince of Qatar, he is number one supporters of all the terrorists in the world. Look how evil they are. So we bring the American to protect us. They are going to be our umbrella. In the same time, we will be friends to all the terrorists in the world, and we will use those terrorists as a penalty arm against anyone who goes against us, including the Saudi. The Prince of Qatar. And the government should stop supporting terrorism. So they acknowledge and there's and he knew what is the purpose of it and now this article which is written about the crown prince which I believe 100% written by the money and the ink of Qatar is to make the Qatari have something to attack the Saudi with they will say okay look there is a historian very famous one he is saying that the days of the crown prince of Saudi Arabia are numbered. So you better 
come to us and be friend with us and don't be friend with this government because this government will not stay for long while we are protected by the American and we have a strong economy and we have a lot of money and money will talk so this man he wrote this article speaking about the days which is numbered which I totally I don't agree with for a very simple reason all the reasoning he gave they are the opposite of what he said as an example he said they arrested many princes actually that made the crown prince more more supported by the young Saudi why because always princes are above the law because you are a Saudi prince you are from the royal family so you do whatever you wish for the first time the Saudi they saw that if you are a prince or not a prince you can go to jail in this country if you are not paying the money and not doing what is right and or you are scamming the country you are you are building fake buildings taking loans from the government etc blah 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 all the kind of a fraud so you do fraud you will be arrested and even if you are the most important cousin for the king son in this case we are talking about uh the, the prince al walid which is no prince he is just an idiot and you know let us say a uh, time the bridge they made them princes and kings he was arrested and many others and that was not actually something bad to happen in the eyes of the saudi it was the opposite because now they know that in this country there's no big before for holding the title of a prince that's alone is a no no nobody get close to you it doesn't matter what do you do you are protected you are a royal you are born with big salary even if you are an, the idiot of the village police cannot stop you court cannot take you nobody can question you and by the arrest of those the crown prince he earned a lot of respect then in the same article this guy he said the crown prince he arrested big scholars Muslim scholars as you see here and this is again you know the one who adopt the attack on the on the on the Saudi is a Jazeera TV as usual this guy, his name is Al Ouda, and uh, supposedly, if you go to his page in you know in Facebook, he have like a million subscriber. Uh, however, most of them they are not really Saudi. So here they speak about arresting a big name for the Muslims, but they forgot that this is not a big name for the Saudi as much as a big name for the Muslims, and there's a huge difference. Who care about somebody? let us say i am a muslim cleric and i have seven hundred thousand supporters in indonesia and i have ten thousand supporters in saudi arabia so my heavy weight is not in saudi arabia it is in indonesia and who care about indonesia in, in the in the case we are talking about in saudi arabia so you know the, the way they analyze information is very stupid and very naive and obviously it's as I said it's paid by the Qatari the Saudi Prince uh, actually if you look with me here in Al Arabiya English they are showing you in the news the moment the Saudi Prince was arrested I don't know if you can see it here do you see the news here the moment when the Saudi Prince was arrested and remember this is the propaganda tv station of the crown prince of saudi arabia which is against it is to fight the jazeera so they wanted to present to you that we are in a country even if you are a, a prince from the royal family you will be arrested so this is was something positive not negative as this idiot in this article trying to say same time those businessmen who he named them they are they cannot escape Saudi Arabia for very simple reason 
and I can you know can I explain to you you see I am an American citizen let us say I'm going to go and live in uh, in Japan tomorrow do you think I am escaped and I am safer from the hand of the government of USA they can send a letter to the government of Japan to be to arrest me immediately and they will arrest me being abroad is not really a problem the only way to hide from being arrested if you are a person who changes ID who hide but how those people they can hide I mean they have billions and billions of dollars it's not like a guy who have a, you know nobody knows him nobody even know their faces and you know they change their ID fabricated uh, uh, you know fraud ID etc and this is not the case those are very well known very well known businessmen who have banks who have money everywhere so they cannot hide themselves and it doesn't matter where you go as long you have a citizenship of a government the government they can ask for you as simple as that as an example just yesterday the government of Belgium delivered a Muslim Abdul terrorist who originally he is from Russia to the Russian intelligence why because the Russian intelligence they issue an arrest order for this guy for he work with the terrorist groups and the Belgium government the police they arrested him and delivered him as simple as that if I am a Russian citizen and live in America you know maybe the American because they don't have a good friendly relationship with the Russian they will fight it for some time but by law they can get you now the Saudi they promoted the arrest of a Saudi prince the moment when a Saudi prince was arrested they are posting that in their own TV and the purpose is to make everybody believe that we have a real government here this is not a joke where it's a farm where a bunch of people they own the country to the point the whole country is called Saudi I mean have you ever heard of a country have the last name of the family of the king they don't even have a name for the country because this country never exists not even in the time of Muhammad not even after then there's nothing is called Saudi Arabia what is Saudi Arabia so they write articles to make many believe as a propaganda that the crown prince is weakened but the fact he is getting more strength other example they said one of the biggest reasons for the saudi prince crown prince is going to lose his position soon according to this writer the war in yemen but this idiot do not understand that the war of yemen is sponsored big time by the Saudi citizen you see in order to understand act and react or let us say action and reaction you need to it's not only like this is not physic you know physic you have uh, you know okay if we have the water here and we have a, a, a tube here the water will go here and will go up and will stand in the level this is physic but but in the in the case of religion and culture you cannot make a judgment on something without understanding the religion and the culture when the Saudi they went and they involved in the war in Yemen that was actually for a very clear reason it is to make Isis look bad and to make the crown prince look like he is a hero who defend the Muslim Sunni against the Shia if you remember when the when the war in Yemen started Isis was growing very big and actually they control more than half of Syria and more than half of Iraq which is a very huge land and the Saudi they noticed that they are losing ground and now the Isis uh, 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 Islamic state of potatoes they claim that they are the one who they are the real one who defend the Muslim Sunni they are the one and the only one who defend the Muslim Sunni in the Middle East 
So when the Shia Al Houthi he took over the government of Yemen, the Saudi they found in that a great opportunity to present themselves in front of the Muslim Sunni around the world that we are the true one who defend the Sunni, not ISIS, who they are even killing Sunni in the same time they kill Shia. So look what we will do. We will make an opposition for the Shia government in Yemen and we will attack them and we will bring many Sunni countries with us to join us in this opposition. And by doing that, the Saudi, they granted themselves a position of leadership between the Sunni and every Sunni in the world. He noticed, okay, the Saudi, they are sacrificing a lot of money a lot of effort to defend the Sunni in Yemen and that's really good to prevent the Shia from expanding and taking over the Arabian Peninsula so this guy he is saying that the war in Yemen is a reason for the crown prince to lose his position in fact it is the opposite it is a reason not only for the crown prince to gain his position and be stronger even for the royal family because this is actually the purpose of this war and you will not find one Muslim Sunni he don't support the Saudi in their attack on the Houthi which is a Shia uh, 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 terrorist organization and then we notice that each time Qatar is in the corner, they start buying weapon left and right, like like a mad person who is pan panicking. You know, he, he have a panic and he he don't know what to do. And right away they start. They fly to to England. They want to buy fighter jets. They go to uh, uh, Trump. Trump he announced that the Qatar government have to stop sponsoring terrorism. The week after the. Qatari government they sign an agreement with the USA billions of dollars to to to, to buy uh, uh, f-15 which is useless I mean f-15 who need f-15 in these days what f-15 would do and why even Qatar need f-15 I mean what you can do with it all your army is not the size of a hotel in China and all of them they have a big belly they can't even run so why they are a rush to buy from Britain? Look, right away, 12 billion deal with USA. Okay. Then they want to buy immediately in the same time. You see here in June, here in September, Qatar to buy 24 fighter jet from Britain, Al Jazeera TV. Why they are buying those weapons? Is it really to protect themselves from the Saudi? No, they knew they are no match. So. What is the purpose? Is to bribe the Western government. Please, we will give you the money. Don't leave us alone. Don't leave us alone. We give you what do you want. Uh, let me answer this Abdul. His name is Faris. Faris, let me show you that what you are saying is absolutely false and present the false religion of Islam. You Muslims, you don't have decency. Let me guys show you what Faris he said. Even though I'm going to go a little bit out of my topic, but we will go back, no problem. It doesn't It doesn't hurt to spank Abdul, you know, a little bit. Faris, he said, all your little brain can handle is that Jesus, B, 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 U, H, by the way, Jesus, he have a PhD, died for your sin so you can do a new sin. That is a false claim coming from a false Muslim who believe in a false God and false prophet his name is Muhammad I challenge you to show me one verse in the Bible it says that a Christian person he can do sin for Jesus he died for our sin if you are unable to find one I will find you the equal one in the Quran Abdul where Muhammad he have a license for doing sin in the past and in the future so let me spank you you ask for it I cannot handle it to stop myself from spanking you here we go
in the Quran and I'm waiting for you to show me the verse in the Bible it says the Christians they can do sin Jesus said not everyone says to me Lord Lord which means God God will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will so why you are a liar you have to do the will of the father in order to go to heaven being a Christian without following and doing the will of the father will not save you you are a liar like your prophet and now let us see what your prophet he said that his God told him look at this this is the God of the Islam promising Muhammad open license for sin have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this before let us see look like the internet is a little bit slow come on Let us do it again. What a stupid religion. The only religion actually give open license for sin is Islam. You do as much sin as you want and you go and you kiss the black stone and you touch the other stone, which is a bathroom stone coming from Yemen. And by doing that, and I will show you the hadith, your prophet he said, your sin is forgiven. You are the one who have a license for sin not us now if you read with me here you will see Allah saying to Muhammad this is not a Jazeera TV this is not the Prince of Qatar this is not Al-Arabiya this is your God is speaking and making poo, poo chapter Faris to speak verse number two it says read with me you liar For our God he gave us forgiveness in the to come who promised Venus, and this is the clear proof that this is the true God who Venus oh. give us a jellyfish to sleep. Oh. The one who mature except Allah which is supposedly God and it you're, ex, you're accusing the Christian that they believe in this garbage you liar when you are the one who believe in it you are the one who believe in it my voice is breaking okay it's all right it's all right The devil is unhappy so as you see they accused you that Jesus he died for your sin so you can do sin but they cannot prove such a thing no Christian believe in such a garbage you are a liar like your father the devil we Christian we don't believe that Jesus died for our sin that's mean we can do more sin that is an absolute lie made by liars like you it's you Muslims your prophet, he said, any one of you, any one of you, he want his sin to be forgiven, go and kiss the black stone and touch it and touch the other stone in the other corner. <laughs> uh, if I touch the stones, my sin is gone. Why? What kind of religion we are talking about? Stone age religion? Yes. It's a stone religion, stone age religion. Everything in this religion is a stone age. Let me show you the hadith. Here we go. Read with me and laugh. Brother Tata. The other person, his name is the Christian prince. He always say that Islam is a pagan religion. First of all, we Muslims are not pagans. 
and the proof it in the front of our eyes. The prophet beat upon him, he said, and this is after he cleaned his boogers and he was cleaning his poo-poo. He said, Abu Abdul Rahman, he said, why do I only see you touching the two corners? This is our brother Abu Abdul Rahman. And he is wondering why, why he is touching the two corners. And here the answer came to him like a thunderbolt, brother. Read with me carefully, brother. Alhamdulillah. Abdul Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching the two corners? Why, brother? What's wrong? He said, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, touch them, touch them, brother, touch them. They erase your sin. Who is the pagan one, you Abdul? Touching black stones, touching stones will erase your sin. This is an open license for sin in the future and the past. All what you need is to wipe your ass with the stones of the Kaaba. And this is a religion? They are pagans and they accuse us to be pagans. Show me where in the Bible it says if you touch stones, your sin is forgiven. Can you? And look how he is dead now. He have no answers. Do you want to call me Faris? Do you want to call me? Or you are a potato who don't dare. And your mommy is not next to you, so you don't dare to do it. If you ever marry from a Khadija, a woman, she is 25 years older than you, and you can afford to call me in Skype for free, let me know. Just let me know. Now we go back to our topic. Sorry, guys, I have I have to spank this Abdul. He asked for it. I mean, what I can do? I cannot resist. <laughs> hey, Faris, the funny that your prophet do not know even how to read his own book, but you follow him. Do you see how stupid you are? Christians, you don't even read your Bible. Do you know even, do you know even, did you read even your Quran? You're a prophet himself. If we put in the front of him the word Muhammad and the word donkey, and we ask him which one is you, he might choose the donkey. Because according to you, he do not know how to write, how to read. And yet you are asking about if we know how to read. Anyway, we go back to our topic. Sorry, guys, for changing the topic a little bit. But Abdul, he asked for it. And I have time for I have no time for this kid no more. Uh, Faris, if you want, call me. Be a man and call me. Otherwise, I have to put you time out. You are changing our topic, and we don't want to do that. So we go back to the topic about the crown prince, which is Abdul from Saudi Arabia. Qatar, lately, they found there is only one government can support them for real in the Islamic world, and that is Turkey. As you know, Turkey is a Muslim Brotherhood controlled government. So now we have two governments in the world controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood, Qatar and Turkey. And just a few years ago, the Muslim Brotherhood control Egypt. So the number of country controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood was growing. And actually, this was not the plan of the Muslim Brotherhood alone. It was the plan of the USA, Obama. And when I say Obama, again, I say the Muslim Brotherhood in USA. Let me open uh, the Middle East map so we can see and understand better. Give me a second. <clears throat> Give me a second. Middle East. Map. All right. In the front of us, we see the Middle East map. 
let us zoom a little bit so you guys you can see with me what I'm talking about the plan of Obama who I believe strongly he himself is a member of the Muslims Brotherhood is to create an empire Islamic Empire controlled by the Muslims Brotherhood after the uh, revolution in Egypt the Muslim Brotherhood they found a great opportunity to control Egypt people are desperate we have a secular government and they are corrupt so they said to themselves in in the in the revolution uh, uh, year which it, it was started you know uh, you know things start to go crazy until uh, 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 they were able to to take off the Egyptian I'm sorry not the Muslim Brotherhood take off Mubarak from his presidency by the help of Obama the first one who asked Mubarak who is the best friend to USA to leave the office it was the filthy Obama why because this is the plan but Mubarak was a very loyal dog to USA so now why the American they betray him it is not the American betray him we have a Muhammad Hussein Obama in the office and the plan is so clear we want to start an Islamic organ Muslim Brotherhood and Obama was successful they gave the USA government Obama under Obama they gave Egypt to the Muslim Brotherhood so this area became a Muslim Brotherhood area in total big huge country like Egypt uh, I'm breaking up guys I'm not sure why um all of you you don't you, you have the same difficulty hmm okay let us hope that is going to be you know what let me turn my uh, my uh, some internet here off I don't know why maybe too many users it's weekend anyway so now Egypt is under the Muslim Brotherhood. Turkey already is under the Muslim Brotherhood. So we have Turkey now and we have Egypt. And we will make it in a blue. So Turkey is controlled by Muslim Brotherhood. The Obama plan working very well. Then we have a small tiny country here it's called Qatar and this country controlled by Muslim Brotherhood so the Muslim Brotherhood is increasing by size and then the revolution in Libya happened and al Qazafi was killed if you remember Hillary Clinton she met only with one figure from Libya just one person and he was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood now ask yourself why the American they will meet with somebody from the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya and forget about all the, the other population I mean Libya is a, is a four million country people and or five million it's a huge by size but small by population so why they met only one person and he is the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood because that the, the, the plan is we will take we will take al qazafi and we will make this country a muslim brotherhood country as simple as that 
and this was the main reason for the ambassador of USA in Libya to be killed. For at that moment, the USA ambassador, he became a supplier by the CIA for weapon for the Muslims Brotherhood by the order of the faith Obama. The other groups don't not like that. They knew that, that the plan that, OK, they want to give Libya to the Muslim Brotherhood. And now we are Muslim terrorists like the Muslim Brotherhood. So why do they don't support us? So they attacked the embassy and they killed the ambassador. And at that time, Obama did not want to make a scandal about it because he will be exposed for a real reason why they were killed. And the plan was, as we said, to make Libya a Muslim Brotherhood control. But this plan did not work for them. The reason did not work because Imarat, which is a small, tiny country here, and Saudi Arabia, which is a huge country here, they got the Muslim Brotherhood busted, planning for taking over the government of the two countries. And the Saudi, they announced, and the Emirati, they announced the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist groups. And that was the down point of all the plan. The plan of Obama destroyed by this. He was not expecting this to happen that fast. They thought the Muslim Brotherhood, they will take over Saudi Arabia, they will take over Emirat, they already take over Qatar, and Syria war started, and they were hoping very soon, in a few months, just a few months, that Syria is going to fail into the land of the Muslim Brotherhood. And actually, Erdogan, he said, by Allah, next Friday, I'm going to pray in Damascus. They thought it just a few days. If you go in the news, you will see the days of Al-Assad is numbered. Obama said that. The, the, the USA uh, uh, ambassador for the uh, United Nations said that. Everybody says that. That the days of even uh, uh, at that time, Sarkozy, he said, everybody said that the, uh, the days of the Assad are numbered. And the Assad is still there. And they are the one is gone out. So the plan was very simple. We make Turkey, already actually it is, Muslim Brotherhood. Then we create what it's called revolution in Syria. in order to extend the empire of Erdogan. Then Jordan is very easy. Jordan, already now, 90% of the population is Muslim Brotherhood, which means they can take over the country in one day. And then we connect all of those with Egypt. Then we take over Saudi Arabia. And with the help of the American, we will make Libya a Muslim Brotherhood. And then, in the same time, the Muslim Brotherhood, they won the election in Tunisia. So look, 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 look what happened. The Islamic State, the Islamic State is created. You see, uh, uh, after Obama was elected, I was doing a radio show with the brother Osama Daktok. I don't know if how many of you know him. And I said in his radio show, you can go and listen to it. I said Obama will not leave before he create an Islamic state. And I receive an email from somebody, one of you, he says to me, Christian Prince, I could not believe it that you said that. How you predict that this will happen? I mean, it's obvious. It is the plan. We control the head of the world. We put a Muslim, he is a Muslim Brotherhood. Then the rest is easy. We have the money of Qatar, which is unlimited. We have Turkey, which is in a very sensitive, strategic place, threatening Europe. And we have a base of hundreds, if not millions, of members in an organization. It's called the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the most organized crime organization. And the plan was working perfectly. But what happened in Saudi Arabia? By the Saudi government discovering the plan of the Muslim Brotherhood, 
the dream starts shrinking every person in Saudi Arabia who is a Muslim Brotherhood either arrested or deported the Saudi then they flood Egypt with money sponsoring any opposition against the Muslim Brotherhood government in Egypt and in less than a year the Muslim Brotherhood they lost Egypt in Syria the war started 2011 2012 and the Muslim Brotherhood and they thought they will take over the country in less than a few days however the Saudi they start sponsoring the groups which is terrorist groups in order to eliminate the Muslims Brotherhood and that can be found by sponsoring Isis and Isis they start killing every organization is not part of them including the Muslim Brotherhood actually they consider them even kuffar so the dream about Syria to be controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood is disappear the dream about controlling Egypt is gone the dream about controlling Libya is gone you know right away Emirat and Saudi Arabia they start sponsoring all kind of militant groups who they are fighting against the Muslim Brotherhood and their influence the dream became a shadow Obama lost USA Obama lost Hillary Clinton the scammers bought by the Saudi anyway and this is why the Saudi they invested a lot of money with Hillary Clinton because they thought okay we got rid of Obama but now soon we will have Hillary and she might sponsor the Qatar regime again so let us buy her before the Qatari buy her and now the Turkish regime which is the Muslim Brotherhood it's at the edge of death it's in the in the bed of death if you go right now and check the currency of Turkey how every day by day is shrinking and losing its value the Prince of Qatar he flood Turkey with a lot of money supposedly to sponsor Turkish economy but that will not work actually this will be the opposite because it's a fake it's a fake investment the money will not stay there you see the problem is when you have a corrupt government corrupt president corrupt his family are controlling the business you know this guy him and his uh, and his son and his uh, his, his son-in-law they are controlling the country just yesterday the prince of qatar he gave a gift to erdogan a brand new 777 boeing airplane just for his own private use and this is a clear sign of corruption because if erdogan is not a corrupt person he will not accept such a gift i mean what i would do with uh, with such an uh, airplane how i'm going to sponsor this airplane who is going to pay for the gas and etc because simply he is a corrupt man so the clear signs of corruption when somebody is a president he gets so rich he received gifts from everywhere and nobody can question where why you are getting gifts what is the response what is the return nobody give for gift for free it can happen maybe if your friend he want to give you for your birthday a pen eh, but not a house not an airplane not an island not a yacht cost hundred five hundred million dollar so those gifts very clear sign of corruption and making many 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 businessmen flee Turkey and Turkey now is collapsing it's just a matter of time this country is going to go bankrupt the only reason for Turkey until now did not go bankrupt is the German and the American until now Trump he did not make decision to bankrupt Turkey if he did Turkey will collapse overnight and when we say collapse it means the country will not exist no more it's because economy mean army will collapse no salaries no money no food no industry no electricity money is the fuel of life in the country and Turkey is going to face such an end very soon Turkey now hoping that they can play the game where they can be friend to the Russian friend to the Iranian and 
maybe a little bit of friend with the American. And the game is in a balance of the following. Whoever bribe us, we will be his friends. But it's not working. Erdogan is truly stupid person. The Russian, they don't care really if you go with them or you don't go with them. Anyway, already you are in the NATO. And now you are in a deep garbage and you are desperately in need of the Russians. So you have no choice to be with them or not to be with them. The Iranian is the hope of staying surviving now for Turkey because Trump is putting sanctions on Iran and now the Turkish they will find themselves having a great opportunity to buy the Iranian oil and they smuggle it to Europe and to other countries for a very cheap price the same as they used to do by stealing the oil from Syria sold to them by ISIS for five dollars a barrel which means the Turkish government make or let us say the grand the, the the son of Erdogan who is in control of the business of the oil he make it from every barrel almost 55 to 60 dollars to his pocket but still that will not help Turkey because as we said corruption will not you see if if money come into a country because of corruption the country will not get the benefit of the money the corrupt one they will get the money and the country will collapse anyway so now what we see Europe is involved in this fight Qatar is buying media in Europe if you go right now a lobby they have a lobby they have people who work for them 24 hours seven days a week explain to me why we should vote as citizen in this state against oil industry in our area I said why they said because this is new uh, you know uh, uh, method of producing oil is destroying the the health is destroying it and later we found out and I know that all those groups are sponsored by the Saudi because USA became the number one producer for oil was a big threat to the economy of Saudi Arabia which is based on oil the price of oil went so down America do not need their oil no more and now the American method of producing oil is spreading around the world and the oil industry became history USA destroyed the oil industry of the Middle East because now there is many countries they have oil and actually the reason for the real reason for the bankruptcy of Venezuela right now is the revolution of recovering oil by the American additional to that the stupid Saudi in certain time in order to fight the Iranian regime they decide to fix the oil price in a very cheap price for many years hoping to do two things number one Iran will go bankrupt number two the American will be happy because that will hurt the Russian economy but remember Russia economy is beyond anyone to be able to destroy it in case you do not know what Russia is about, my friend, Russia is the biggest country in this earth. It is a planet by itself. It is not really a country. You know, it is not a country. Russia is not a country. It's a continent by itself. If you go and see Russia, look, this is Russia. Just to give you an idea, where is Russia? Russia here is touching USA from this side. This is Russia. How you can put sanctions in a country like this? You know? How you can put sanctions 
how you know how you can do it I mean it's impossible I'm just you know like drawing a line fast line this is Russia they have everything they have the gas they have the oil they have the food they have the fish they have the meat they have they have everything they are number one producer for food in the world who can put sanctions on Russia nobody it's a joke you cannot even go in war with Russia because whoever will go in, in war with them he will lose even if it is the great America we are no match and now you notice that the Saudi Arabia for the first time in their history the king of Saudi Arabia he went all the way to the king of the Russian Putin kissing his shoes asking for protection because the, the Saudi they learned and the Qatari they learned actually the Prince of Qatar he gave the the keys of Damascus imagine the in the Jazeera TV the, the the Qatari they say that the the Russian are the only reason for the Assad regime to stay but yet the Prince of Qatar the ruler of Qatar he gave the king that he gave Putin the key of Damascus the key of Damascus the city Damascus the old one of the oldest cities in the world let me see the new let me, let me find it for you give Putin key of Damascus let us see Maybe we can find it in English just to show you the hypocrisy of this man Uh, I just I just search about uh, uh, you know uh, Putin and uh, the Qatar you know look how many times they are meeting with them suddenly suddenly Russia is a main major point of the Qatari regime why because they are seeking protection they notice that this Russian they are not like the American a Russian if you have a good relationship with them they don't betray you American is a democratic country the president who is in your side today he will lose election tomorrow in Russia Putin is the king for many many years in the past and to come nobody can defeat this guy for nobody really was able to make the country successful like him so you will see here that everything happening is going in the field of the Russian not as before in the field of the American front yard the Russian now became so strong the old Russia is history the Russia today is not Russia yesterday and all countries in the Middle East they understand very well that having Russia as a friend is extremely important for it is a true protector for their investment and to stay as kings and rulers the same they did with the president of Syria they did not support him by sending emails they supported him by sending troops in the ground hundreds of airplanes and they involved in the war hand by hand and they defeated Isis you see they say Isis was defeated by American and eh, this is not really true maybe in Iraq yes but in Syria, the one who was fighting all terrorist groups, it was the Russian. To make it short, the propaganda you hear always in the news about this guy, his days is number. It's always the opposite, for they are not truthful in their media. The same as they did about Trump. They made us believe that Trump is going to lose. There is no way he's going to win. It's impossible for him to win. All reports, every study, every single study by every single TV station owned by the Saudi and Qatari, they wanted Hillary Clinton to win. Trump is not really wanted by the Middle Eastern countries because this guy is a businessman, but from the kind which they don't like. He cannot be bribed, he's very rich. They cannot buy him. He do not need their money. And he is a businessman, which means he have the mentality, if you don't pay me, 
I don't help you. And pay me here mean pay America. This guy, he was very clear in his message. I am going to make the economy of this country very strong. And he start milking the Saudi and milking the Qatari and milking the Emirati and milking every country around to bring milk to USA. And right away after the election of Trump, the Saudi, they noticed that this guy is not a joke and we cannot risk losing him. So what the king of Saudi Arabia, if you remember, he did, he invited more than 60 king and president to welcome the new king of the White House. And the king of the White House, he stand schooling the infidels, the pagan Muslims, in the heart of Saudi Arabia, telling them what to do and how to live. And everybody bowed down to the king, and everybody salute the king, Trump. And suddenly, Trump visit to us to Saudi Arabia became the most important visit ever in history when just two years ago when Obama went to Saudi Arabia nobody even went to the airport to welcome him you can go and watch the video there both are president of the same country they have the same army nothing changed the same economy nothing changed one when he arrived to the airport there was the governor of the city of Reda waiting for him and his assistant. That's it. Two people, imagine, the president of USA. They don't respect him for two reasons. Saudi and Arab in general, they are very racist. This guy is a black man. They will not respect a black man. This is very, this is in the blood of those people. Number two, Obama he always bow down to everybody bribe him so they don't respect a person who get paid he get paid by them so why they will respect him why they will why they will make a big celebration for having him who is he he is just an employee for us same as hillary clinton but when trump he came to saudi arabia every single prince in the kingdom was there and the king and the crown prince and they made a celebration they never ever did before and trump he came back to usa with hundreds of billions of dollars the chinese i don't want to know i don't want i don't know what to say what about the chinese today the chinese the news it says that the chinese government they destroy a christian church in china and the minister of the church, he challenged the, the, the Chinese government. And you know, the Chinese government is like somebody, like an ostrich, trying to fight Christianity by putting their head in the sand. I mean, who cares if you destroy a church? Christianity is the fastest growing belief in China. I was in China just a, a few months ago this year, I went, and I saw how the number of Christians, nobody can stop, and nobody even can count. How many people convert into Christianity a day? So destroying churches in China will not change anything. And by the way, if you notice all the media, they are speaking about the Muslim in China, but nobody speak about the Christian in China. United Nations, USA, even the funny Trump, they mentioned that the Chinese are not being just to the Muslims, but they don't mention anything about the Christians. Because simply, it's all to serve a propaganda. You know, we mentioned something to show people that we, okay, and see, we defend Muslims. Hello, do you see? Okay, we defend the Muslims in uh, many more. Uh -huh. yeah, Trump, he said that what is done in many more is not justice. Uh, so people now will see that Trump is a person who is fair. Look, he is defending the Muslims. You're right. It's all garbage. Europe, European president, American president, they understand one language which is dollar or euro the rest is not in their dictionary our dictionary is different from their dictionary however today we wanted to show you how the media they try to fabricate news to make you believe in something will happen if you remember a few years ago when obama was a president joe bite me i call him joe bite me not joe bite me uh, this guy he went in tv and he said 
well if I am you I will never go in airplane these days or I will never take a train they scared everybody that the flu of the pig is going to kill every citizen so every poor American he start buying uh, 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 the flu medicine which is supposedly the vaccine and that was all for the benefit of the vaccine company but nobody die I mean maybe one or two in the whole country we have a 300 million citizen they scared the hell of everybody just to make you buy a product I work in the media before the first job I get when I was doing my my, my bachelor degree it was to correct Arabic grammar in a newspaper every day an article about how harmful the coffee how harmful the coffee disgusting the coffee it can could cause this to your heart it can do this to your heart and then same same time articles about how useful the, the tea how this happened all those articles are fabricated they put for you names doctor etc thompson johnson who god knows where this game is coming from he said but who is this guy nobody knows all what happened that the tea company they paid the newspaper money to publish those articles to make to change the mood of people from buying coffee to drink tea then they get money from the coffee company saying why you are doing that give me i will give you a check please write articles to make people buy uh, coffee the same in newspaper one praising the devil the second day praising his enemy it's about who pay more so what we try to do today is to tell you never take your news from the media sadly the media is not a news the media is propaganda organizations everybody is owned by somebody George source he control most of the media in the West George source is the one who destroy countries and collapse countries but he could not collapse Russia he tried and you know for me when I speak about politics I don't take a side really I say what I believe like I voted for Trump but I believe in the same time Trump is not really a good choice but he is the best of the choices you see in America they bring us let us say five donkeys and one mule and they say to us okay choose one whoever you choose is going to be a donkey but there's a big donkey small donkey and then we have to choose between donkeys to be a president we have no choice uh, Trump he drank But he's a swamp and garbage. And when they come to presidency, they come with their garbage. But there's some who have less garbage, and some they have a lot more garbage. There is some they are so stinky to the point you cannot even stay next to them. And there is some they are a little bit cleaner, but all of them they are corrupt, all of them they are false. People don't spend billions of dollars to be president just because you want to be president there's way more beyond being a president money so don't vote doesn't matter what country you are in if you are a Christian or a Muslim or in a way I cannot say to a Muslim vote because Muslim don't believe in voting there's nothing there's no election in Islamic countries it's always a fraud but if you are a person who live in democratic and I say here like democratic is funny word because it's not really real but if you live in such a system where you can vote don't the me to vote for the he is but more they don't work for the countries most of them they are agents for other countries
and she go to visit the king of Oman every few months. I mean, what? Queen of England. They deliver gifts. Same as the or shipping corrupt people. So now in England, we have a prince who is going to get married. The whole media in the world is going to be busy about it, and they made a big, big money from it. The prince who is going to marry an American actor, you know, who is this prince? I mean, if he is a good guy anyway, he will not even marry such a woman. She is an actor. She is acting now to be a princess and a wife. Tomorrow she will dump him. Let us count two years from now. Who need the princes and queens and kings these days? And what the, what is their job exactly? They say to you, it's just for tourism. But those people are corrupt. All of them are corrupt. The mother of those people, which they call her Princess Diana, she was sleeping with everybody in town. She was the bike of the town. She slept with the cook. She slept with the guard. She slept with the head of the guards. She slept with the driver. She slept with the Muslims, Abdul. She slept with everybody. Yet everybody called her princess. And the poor guy, Nu'man Khan, and the Muslims are proud about her, but the poor guy, Nu'man Khan, he just took off his short shirt in the front of some Muslim and he flirt with them and maybe he stepped with them and then everybody make a scandal about it. I mean, this guy, he is doing what is halal in Islam. So the Muslims are proud about Princess Diana who slept with everybody. Why? Because she was sleeping. The last one she slept with was a Muslim and she was planning to marry him, supposedly. Nobody want to say the truth. They call her princess. I call her different name. Right? You know what I'm talking about. So, media, my friend, make you believe in prince and princes. For me, those are very corrupt people. Cheaters, liars, deceivers. The crown prince of England is the most corrupt person ever. So why he deserve to be a king? You tell me. What is what is going to make him a king? Just because he's born of a family? That is a very stupid idea. Second your blood and your salary. How do I know? They have a they have a t they have her in TV. They have interview with her. Go and watch it. She said, <laughs> How you know? <laughs> How you know? <laughs> Oh, you know. Anyway, people are funny. Uh, uh, well, stock market, uh, property. Uh, gold, jewelry, is people get scared because of the media and it moves the economy. The media is the devil of the world today. It makes you make decisions which you are going to be very sorry if you believe in it. So be aware and don't be stupid and don't let people fool you. The media is the last one to tell us what to do in life. You open the History Channel. I remember once I was in the Philippines, and there was uh, there was a bunch of uh, uh, atheists sitting. You know that table's coffee coffee shop is next to me. I hear everything. So there was a Christian guy, and the rest are atheists, and they are making fun of him. 
and they are saying to him they, one of them he said to him go man go work uh, watch uh, discovery channel you will see a lot of uh, they speak against the bible there always you should watch there okay then i stop like i mean sure they have a very because it's based in science i said okay there's they have a program it's called hunted ghost hunted ghost i said yeah they said did you see it i said yeah I said okay you said that this channel involved and be and and only produced programs have to do with science and you were making fun of this christian for he believed in christianity so do you believe in ghost is what i said do you believe in ghost Uh, I said well this is the channel you are talking about they have a program it's called the haunted house do you believe in their science or you don't so how they make a propaganda day and night against Christianity that spirit is a lie ghost is a lie Holy Ghost is not exist Jesus maybe is not exist himself and then they say to you we have a program it's called the haunted house Do you see how stupidity became science? Where is the science? So if you receive your information from the history channel, you got no history. History always written by the hand of the victorious or the one who have the money. If Hitler, he won the war, the history about Hitler will be written differently. He will be the biggest hero in the world. But Hitler, he lost the war. The same as Muhammad. If Muhammad lost the war, history will be written differently. Both are criminals. One he won, one he lost. You know what I mean? History. Have nothing to do with history. Every day I get a flag from YouTube. Okay, how I'm going to write history? Let's say I'm a historian, but I don't have the money to stay online. I don't have the money, the support to make my voice heard. My history will die. The history of the false one will be published. Islam mean peace. Are you getting my point? Which history we are going to talk about? Don't take your information from false sources. Everybody write his history differently. If we go right now and see a books of history written about the president of North Korea, written by someone who live in North Korea, he is the most wonderful man. He is the amazing person. He is the, the, the most beautiful balloon in the world. Take the person who wrote the history in that country just a few kilometers away. Give him $10,000. He will write a different history. If you ask a Muslim to write a book of history about Christian Prince, what he will write there? You will never find one thing positive about Christian Prince. All right? Anyway, uh, today I am invited to be in the Facebook page of a brother Amir in Facebook. And you know he have uh, uh, he will do about two hours from now, or an hour and a half, I think. Hold on, let us see. <clears throat> uh, 
okay about i think no actually it's going to be uh, 7 p.m in germany 7 p.m in germany that's mean in my time here how many hours between us in germany six hours yeah so i think um let me check oh that's mean actually it's already we have to be there in if it's going to be 7 p.m his time that's mean after 30 minutes from now all right anyway guys i want to say thank you for being here feel free to join uh, amir in his uh, facebook if you are a person who speak german we will speak in english and german at the same time and don't forget to tell your friends about what we do and if you like to read more and to study more about the cult of islam and to explore more truth feel free to search my name in amazon.com amazon.de that france etc just type christian prince and you will see the list of my books in many languages with this, I want to say, may the Lord bless you all and keep you in good health and wealth. And may the Lord protect us from the deception, the deception of the devil, which is the media. This is the tool of the devil, and he is trying always to use it for the best of his benefit. Thank you very much. Christ is Lord, and Islam is false. See you soon again. Bye-bye. Take care.